Today, we're going to be talking about the origins of the biblical traditions, and we're going to be connecting some cultures with the American Indians, of course, because I believe and I'm trying to prove that this is the old world and that a lot of the stuff that's that they attribute to the other sides of the water, meaning the eastern world, actually started here in the western world. The images I just had on screen are from this, the public domain review. Arnoldus Montanus, new and unknown world, 1671. Now, before I get into the main topic, I want to show you a few things. To start off, we're going to look into this, the International Cyclopedia, Volume 13. Negroes is the name given to a considerable branch of the human family, possessing certain physical characteristics which distinguish it in a very marked degree from the other branches of varieties of mankind more especially the so-called whites or Europeans. In Blumenbach's five-fold division of mankind, the Negroes occupy the first place under the variety Ethiopian, which likewise embraces the Kaffirs, Hottenots, Australians, Alphorians, and Oceanic Negroes. We just gonna skip to the second paragraph. And it says both Pritchard and Laham strongly protest against the common error of looking upon the term Negro as synonymous with African, meaning Negro and African are not the same. It ought to be remembered, says the former, that the word Negro is not a national appellation, but denotes the ideal type constituted by the assemblage of certain physical characteristics, which is exemplified in the natives of Guinea and West Africa and in their descendants in America and the West Indies. And Latham, in like manner, observes, no fact is more necessary to be remembered than the difference between the Negro and African. Now, we're going to look into this book to corroborate what I just read, and this is from 1806. I shall add another reflection of public utility. The blacks, or Negroes, are a kind of men destined by nature to inhabit Africa and America. See, he didn't say Africans. He said the blacks, or Negroes, because we know Negro means black. She has created them for burning regions. Now we're going to look into this. This is by C.S. Raffinesque. The Primitive Black Nations of America by Professor C.S. Raffinesque. The Society of Geography having offered a reward for the best memoir on the origin of the Asiatic Negroes, I sent them last year two memoirs, one on those Asiatic Negroes, wherein I demonstrated the affinities of their languages with the African and Polynesian Negroes, as well as with the Hindus and Chinese, and re renders it probable that all the Negroes originated in the southern slopes of the Himalayan mountains, as they did once exist all over India, India, South China, Japan, Persia, and Arabia. My second memoir was on the Negro or black nations. We know that don't mean African. Found in America before Columbus, wherein I proved their existence and connection by language with the Negroes of Africa and Polynesia. These memoirs have been rewarded by the Learned Society of Geography with a gold medal of 100 francs which was lately communicated to me by Messrs. Warden, our former counsel in Paris and Jomert member of the Institute. So he wasn't just talking, he was able to prove it. That's why he was rewarded. Then he goes to name some tribes such as the Aragoos of the West Indies, the Californums of the Carib Islands, the Black Indians met by the Spaniards in Louisiana in 1543, the moon eyed Negroes and albinos destro destroyed by the Cherokees and seen in Panama, and etc. And you can see that he made some affinities or seen some affinities with the languages. Among these, the Yoruba language has 50% of analogy with the Guana, 40% with the Ashanti or Fanti of Guinea, about 33% with the Fula, etc. Now, we finna look into this book. And I'm just using this book to prove that a lot of the stories in the Bible weren't from the Israelites themselves, that they're basically from other much earlier sources. 
While there is no evidence that the Hebrews brought any special material culture with them from Mesopotamia to Palestine, it is now quite certain that they did keep a considerable part of, they, of their ancestral higher culture. Much of the early higher culture of the Hebrews as preserved in the books of Genesis and Exodus, rarely, rarely elsewhere, contains elements brought from Mesopotamia during the time of the patriarchs, that is, no later than the 16th century BC. Genesis 1, though going back to early times in its original poetic form, received its present form in the 7th century BC and is probably a specifically Israelite synthesis of elements from Babylonia, Egypt, and Canaan, largely obscured by Israelite demythologizing. On the other hand, the account of creation in Genesis 2 is very definitely Mesopotamia in origin, as shown by mention of the primordial river, Hebrew Ed which is transparently Sumerian Id River, which, which was taken over as the proper name of the river god, especially as the valleys of the upper Euphrates and Tigris. The story of the flood in Genesis is so close to the various Sumerian and Akkadian accounts of the great deluge that a close relationship is certain. It is quite impossible, however, to assume that the story of the flood is derived from any of the extant Sumerian or Akkadian versions. They are all different in detail, and the Hebrew story shows archaic features which must have been derived from a form of the Mesopotamian myth earlier than any preserved in cuneiform sources. It is difficult to separate a myth found all over the world, even as far away as pre-Columbian South America, from the tremendous floods which must, which must have accompanied successive retreats of the glaciers in the closing phases of the Pleistocene age. In other words, the flood story presumably goes back in one form or another at least 10 or 12,000 years and, for all we know, much farther. And my point of all that is, it's a story being told that's not their own. It's just being passed down. Now let's talk about Father Crespi and the artifacts that he found in South America. While thousands of Crespi's artifacts are unremarkable in that they can be clearly classified according to their age and the indigenous culture they belong to, there remained a small subset of items that sparked intense controversy. Some of the artifacts are Babylonian in style. Others appear to have been carved in gold with strange motifs and symbols that do not resemble objects from any South American culture. Some of the gold plates appear to show a type of ancient writing although as far as we are aware, none of them were identified and translated. So it's so ancient, they don't even really know what it is. And here we have a photo of one of these gold sheets. And you see that it's gold. It'd be, it'd be rather hard to fake this. It'd be expensive, especially for this time period. We got more gold placed with an unknown hieroglyphic writing on it. Now maybe it's just me, but the figure on the right appears to have Negroid features, but it could be just me. Here we have more figures, which appear to be Babylonian in style. Here we have another gold plate with Paleo Hebrew writing on it. I want you to remember that all of this was found in South America. And here we have another gold artifact, but this one has Egyptian hieroglyphics on it, which you have to go back and watch my older videos. I'm always talking about how Egyptians, Mesopotamians, how they all started here. And this just solidifies my point. Now we finna take a look into this book, The American Nations or Outlines of a National History of the Ancient and Modern Nations of North and South America. This is from 1836. If the American nation sprung from ancient colonies, it is among the primitive population of the earth that their parents must be sought and found, since America appears to have been partly people even before the flood. Therefore, the systems which would derive them all from the Phoenicians, Jews, Chinese, Tartars of later ages, or any single people, whatever, must be absurd and improbable, since traces of many ancient nations are found in this Western Hemisphere. As I've been trying to say, we know that everything has a source since all those things from all those many different nations can be found here in America. 
that should tell you that you at least getting close to the source. Nearly all the ancient sciences and useful primitive arts were known in America, as well as commerce and navigation, symbolic and alphabetic writing, nearly all the Asiatic religions, etc. Remember I told you about the Asiatic Negroes that C.S. Raffinesque wrote about. This cor corroborates with that.